How are you getting on, folks? Um, look at us. Today didn't really go as well as we'd hoped. Um, look at it, it's just a case of seconditis. It, it's it's not that we're we're calling races badly. It's just I suppose it's just finding one too good and different things like that just not going our way. Um, obviously, look at we'll just fly through them there. Champagne sparkles ran a decent enough race. Look at it, couldn't get to that um that Willie Mullins favorite. Uh, it's not El Barra it was it. Uh, or en banan or something like that um whatever way you pronounce it uh that was definitely a very very nice winner uh lee charbonier though was a very nice winner for us at two to one um obviously look, look at your tf was started out at four to seven but went to went out to i think two to eleven uh bally Kane's very very unlucky drifted like a barge um and it looked like it was going to win but it just it, it just tired near the line I definitely think that uh, that Brendan Murphy definitely has a nice sort of a dual purpose sword, whatever way he wants to go. He'll probably, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what way he'll go, whether he'll stay at hurdles or go for flat, but I know he's more of a flat trainer, so he's probably going to aim for the car or, or somewhere like that. I'm not 100% sure. Um, ah, oh, Jeannie, the, the patron tip, second again, um, that started out at 7-1 to one there last night, got backed into, I think, 4-1 to favourite. Uh, just found one too good, another heavily gambled horse that was obviously targeted for this race and we just didn't spot it. Um I think it started out at something like twenty to one, was backed into four to one favourite. So look at it it's just the name of the game. We just can't get them right the whole time. Um Soviet Pimpernel, I actually didn't see the race, so I don't know what happened. All I know is he didn't win anyway, whatever whatever the case was. Um sidetracked faller, prize fighter, poor. Uh, simple as that. Price fighter was poor on a, on his on his debut. He should have been at least in the top three there, but he ended up being pulled up. He, he was he was absolutely nowhere. Like he just doesn't seem to. He he doesn't seem to be. Look, I'm probably being a little bit harsh, but I on on paper he should have been the the class act of the field, and he just wasn't today. Uh, moving on to tomorrow and Clon Mel. Definitely one of my better tracks. I've been absolutely crying out for the likes of Clan Mel or Cork to come around again. Um, obviously, look at we had we had two winners or three winners last time out in, in Clan Mel the last day in Turles. Um, so we're we're hoping for something like that again. I'm always saying I always refer to Clan Mel as clean sweep Clan Mel. Um. And that's just going back from a nickname I gave it a couple of years ago when I think I had something like five winners in the second from, I think, six or seven runners. So it was it, it was a very, very good day that particular day. And I, I just have the nickname stuck to it since. But um, look, at I've big prices in here. I have short prices. I've, I've everything that you need uh, in terms of hopefully getting a very good day. I've studied the race and as best I possibly can. Um and hopefully I found out the biggest prize winner for you all um, now coming into tomorrow. First race off the 2.25. And this here has the Priest Leap for Arthur Moore uh, at, I think, 2-5 to five favorite. Uh, in my opinion, and it's only my opinion now, I think the Priest Leap is way too short um, realistically to be, to be going all in on. Uh, if you're wanting to get some sort of profit from this particular race you're better off and miles better off going uh for something along the lines of an each way market now i was looking through the horses in here in terms of bigger prices and i've found a double double figure horse in here that looks to be very very nicely bred um obviously looking with the rain that we've had it's going to soften the ground up an awful lot more. We know the pre sleep doesn't really appreciate soft to heavy ground. Uh, I think he'd really realistically want yielding to good, uh, or a bit better than that to be able to show his true potential. I don't think he's going to get that now tomorrow. Uh, so I am actually going to be going with a horse here. So efficient for Sh I think it's Sheila Duggan. It's S Duggan on the, uh on the race card, but I'm nearly sure it's Sheila Duggan for Barry John Foley. 
uh, claiming five pounds off. But this one here is currently priced in around twenty to one, and this is a great each way uh, bet in my personal opinion. Now look at when you're going through the the bloodline. The dam, the dam side is very very. What well, what's the way to say it? It's a very nice bloodline in terms of potential and superstars and everything else like that. Now, when you look at what the dam is related to, she's a half sister to the dam that pr produced the Wicked Keeper, who I suppose, in all seriousness, was I suppose a horse that preferred better ground than this. So that definitely would be a. It'd be a. I suppose a. What's the word to say it? it? It's a it's a negative here, especially with the rain that's after and fallen. But then you look down through it and what I suppose what else the, the the horse is related to, and she's related to two other superstars here in the form of Lammy Surge, uh, who was an absolute mudlark for Nicky Henderson. Well, when I say it, a superstar, it was a very decent horse in terms of this field. It would be classed as a superstar. Let's just say. Um, it's a very weak field and, and different things like that but Lammy Surge was definitely a mudlark he loved I suppose soft to heavy heavy ground Um, on his day and in this particular type of ground he was definitely a very very talented horse and uh, I would honestly say that if this so efficient came along through that sort of a bloodline then it's a serious serious benefit uh, as well as that, then you have the likes of Sizen and Cadelco, who again was another absolute mudlark. He, he he absolutely loved the mud, everything else like that. Uh, hasn't really been the same same since, but uh, yeah, definitely in his glory days, he was a very very talented horse for for um, Henry de Bromhead. I think he's with is he with Scudamore now? I'm not one hundred percent sure, but I, I I think I think he's over over the water now at the moment. But definitely anyway. This so efficient. Look at it. It's worth taking a chance each way. I definitely don't think the, the pre-sleep is going to get home. Or if he does, he's not going to win like a 2-5 to five should. Um, There's probably better horses in here with better um, breeding in terms of soft to heavy ground. And I just think that so efficient is one of the more, I suppose, overlooked horses in, in, this, in this race. It's a newcomer, look at it. We don't know how good this horse is. It, it's definitely a chance, and it's a chance I'm willing to take. But at a price of twenty to one, it, it's certainly worth in each way. When you look at what he's related to, uh, three o'clock. Then another one in here. Um, for Henry de Bromhead, uh, an odds on shot. I think it's one to four. Uh, who was third behind Mount Leinster Gold and Robin de Glory, uh, last time out. Now look at that form has been sort of backed up with Robin the Glory coming a very very close second to a Gordon Elliott horse that's got, just got um, gone out of my head now at the at the present time but in my opinion 1-4 is is, uh, is definitely a little a very very short price to be taken in this horse here it's it's got a lot to prove and different things like that but uh, I don't think it's worth 1-4 by, by any stretch of the imagination one I like here is another each way shout here at twelve to one, um, and again it's it's for Miss O'Shea. I don't know who I don't know what her first name is, but it's down as Miss O'Shea, uh, with Brian Hayes on board with Kate I'll know. Uh, look at currently priced in around twelve to one, and this one here is definitely going into the dam side of the occasion again. Look at uh Jenny's Gray. It was a sister to the dam, uh, who. I suppose was a, a fairly decent and a, it, it won actually a, a two mile bumper um, in oh I can't remember when it was but it, it's down on the it's down on the bloodline that was a, it's a it's related to a two mile bumper winner it's it's related to a two mile hurdle winner as well with Jenny's Jenny's Delight or something like that I'm not 100% sure I think it's Jenny's something anyway whatever it is um, so the two mile bloodline is definitely there. It's definitely going to like the the distance. The trip should be totally fine. Um, Brian Hayes is definitely a very interesting book, and you don't see. Well, I haven't seen him ride too much for for Miss O'Shea. I don't. I, I can't even. I don't even know who Miss O'Shea is. But uh, it, look at it, it's interesting. Um, when you look at, 
I suppose the market and the field that it's in, it's a poor enough field really when you're when you're trying to decipher a, a clear, I suppose, value horse of the day, it's just one in in my opinion that's a little bit uh a little bit of a puzzler. And I just think Kate I'll know look at another unraced horse, we don't know the capabilities, but look at the the bloodline is there to be seen and and everything else like that. It's it's by Golan as well who's who's a, a, a fairly, I suppose, a fairly standard national hunt horse as well, uh, a, a fairly nas- na- standard national hunt stallion, um, who's produced, look at it, he's produced a few fairly decent horses and everything else like that. I just think that, like, I suppose, this so efficient in the first race that this Kate I know is probably a little bit overlooked. And when you look at the... The, I suppose the bloodline and everything else like that. There's an awful lot of boxes ticked about this particular race, and uh, I suppose the fact that the dam as well was a was a two mile hurdle winner as well. Uh, it's uh, it's certainly there. Definitely there to be to be taken advantage of. And look at it, it's a price of twelve to one, so it's worth an each way bet. Um, I just think that it's 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 got great overall potential value and everything else like that it should be definitely in the mix i would imagine so anyway uh 330 then i am going to be going with lean cusack here and uh richie deegan taking five pounds off Boglone and Boglo and honey at uh 10 to 3 and this one here is going to be the next best of the day in my personal opinion look at it, it's there to be seen uh was second behind for our away for uh Oh, Jim Draper, I think it is. I'm nearly sure it's Jim Draper. Um, there in Gorham Park recently enough, I think it was the last meeting it was, yeah. Uh, put up a very, very decent performance that particular day, actually, in heavy ground. So we know this Boglo and Honey is, uh, is definitely a bit of a mudlark, and he does appreciate a fairly decent, um, decent cut in the ground. So... The, the conditions are definitely going to suit him tomorrow. Uh, coming up against Quarry Lil, who is a bit of a course and distance specialist for uh, Paulo Flynn down in Cork. It's interesting. I just think this uh, this Quarry Lil would appreciate the ground to dry out a little bit more. Now, look at I know the last time she won, uh, it was in heavy ground. So it's sort of hard to know whether it's... Uh, whether it's... Um, I suppose a bit how would you say it's a bit um versatile um in terms of ground ground conditions everything else like that so I just think Boglo and Honey is is 10 to 3 at the moment and I just think it should be available definitely um and I would be classing it as my next best the fact that uh that it put in a very, very decent performance last time out. It should be well capable of producing another one. And uh, if it does produce something of similar enough standard, it should be very, very hard to beat and therefore is my next best of the day. The four o'clock then is going to be Edward O'Grady and Mark Walsh here with uh, Priory Park at five to two. Now look at this one here. It meets a Willie Mullins horse here that looks to be, I suppose, fairly okay in, in terms of quality and everything else like that. Pulled up last time out though, so that's a big, big worry for me. I think that was in heavy ground, so it's not going to like conditions tomorrow if that's the case. And uh, this one here is certainly one to be sort of taking an eye in. It's a weak enough race, to be quite honest with you. Um, just to, to put things into perspective, this this uh, Priory Park, he was something like 30 lengths fort behind, uh, behind a, a sort of a... A nice enough sort. I wouldn't say it's a, a very decent sort. But it was a fairly nice sort all the same. In Punchestown if I'm not mistaken. um, On it's last outing. And realistically. That performance alone should be enough to get this lad home here. Uh, when you look at the favourite in here. Being 2-1 to one, uh, for I suppose basically pulling up on it's last outing. You'd have to ask questions of the quality of the field. It's very, very poor in my opinion. Um, it's hard to know, really. Five to two is it a good price? Is it not? I'd certainly rather it than rather take five to two for a horse that was thirty lengths in behind the the eventual winner than take two to one for a horse that pulled up. Um, that's definitely for sure. But 
look at it's a chance I'm willing to take Edward O'Grady is starting to I suppose come into his own as well he's got a few nice nice horses running there recently and he's been putting up some very decent performances um the 430 is going to be crack on curry at 10 to 3 um for Willie Austin and Simon Torrance claiming 5 pounds off this one here is definitely very very interesting look at it. it's a course and distance specialist um generally very very consistent in all sorts of ground but in, especially in heavy ground uh and in around Clonmel as well like it's always first or, first second or third um i don't think it's finished out of the top three or top four when when in clan mel so realistically you're you're putting money down for i suppose consistency and versatility more so than anything else but uh look at it it, it won very convincingly on its penultimate start here last time out uh not actually last time out um it was in december early december uh of 2020 now since then it's finished second and a fairly decent second at that um putting in a very very decent performance i think it was behind rock on barney that particular day but uh look at realistically it's uh it, it's consistency that's that's winning the key here for me it's coming up against westy fox who is a very decent sort as well and put in a very decent performance last time out in Turles, I think, if if I'm not mistaken. Um when second and and a very good second as well at that um last time out. So look at it, it it's hard to know. It's a flip of a coin. My money is down on uh crack on Curry for uh for Willie Austin here. I just think consistency is gonna be good enough here to take the prize for this um this horse here. The five o'clock then is going to be my nap of the day for Ambrose McCurtain and uh, JJ Walsh. Uh, this one here is a knock on knock on Ray. Um, currently priced in around nine to four, and realistically, this horse here should be very very hard to beat. Uh, it was a very very cosy winner in Turles last time out. It was it just absolutely hosed up. It it took the it it took the 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 jockey for a very very nice ride it's like it was just so clean and precise the way it ran the way it traveled the way it jumped everything else was just absolutely pitch perfect um i just think there's there's more improvement in him and the way he won the way he won last time out it was very convincing and very cozy um in terms of style and everything else like that uh, he's look at his face with a penalty here I don't think that's going to be enough to stop him though. I think he's got way too much in hand. I think 9 to 4 is a generous enough price considering he's beaten most of these by between anywhere between 5 and and 25 lengths. Uh it's it's definitely very very interesting and it should be definitely available. I can't imagine uh, 9 to 4 lasts and too long. I definitely think it it's going to go off an awful lot shorter. Uh, especially if it's in uh, the the form it was in the last particular day, it should be very very hard to beat. I think the style of running is going to suit him down to the ground. Uh the the style of the track is going to be very very uh much in his favor as well and conditions as well as that. They're absolutely coming into his favor as well. So realistically there, there's lots to like about him and i would certainly be thinking nine to four is an absolute generous price here uh and finally then the 530 my patron pick of the day so i'm not going to be covering it but look at talking about patron i leave a link in the description below like i've always said um we do daily tips everything else like that ryan had a nine to four double up there today uh dean's is is coming along uh shortly enough i think it's around six o'clock and uh Mine obviously was was very unlucky second there now today, but um overall we are very much in profit and we are uh definitely building the the profit zone more so than anything else. We're very very close to the the hundred pints for one pint stake now, so that's definitely very very interesting. If you've been backing um backing our horses at at a ten or a pint, uh you're very very close now to. A thousand euro in profit. Uh, so that's exactly what we're aiming for. Uh, it's ten euro a month. That's basically what we are charging. We're not going to be asking to asking you to break the bank for for us or anything like that. All we ask for is a tenner a month. It goes to help supporting our podcast. Uh, which 
I suppose, gives light into, I suppose, the, the I suppose, the inside eye to Irish racing and, and the backroom team, um, the likes of jockeys, trainers, stable staff. We even have a jockey coach coming in now, I think around May time. Um, we're hopefully going to be getting the likes of farrier, farriers, vets, um, probably trying to get a dentist in as well. We're, we're going to get the whole industry in. Uh, because that's exactly what we're aiming for. People obviously think, look at, and I know it's very easy to think it as well, that uh, horses just go to the races, turn up uh, and just do the business and come home again. Um, and the trainers, jockeys, everything else like that have a great life going, going off here, there and everywhere. It's not that case at all. Um, and we are doing our ver very living best to try and, I suppose, give light to that as well and give... I suppose give credit to the people behind the scenes that, that don't necessarily get it, but they definitely deserve it, especially in, in times like this and even in the winter months, everything else like that, when the, the rain and everything is blasting into their face. Um, they're there morning, noon and night looking after the horses that we love and the, the least we try and do is just give them back uh, something in return. Basically, look at the tenor a month, um, as well as that then, you get added into a very, very good WhatsApp group with all of the members. Uh, most of them are very, very good tipsters as well. So even if we have a bad day, there's always one or two or three or four people in the WhatsApp group absolutely lighting it up. Um, I don't think there's a day that goes by where one of them doesn't land some sort of a big bet. Uh, so look, at that that's another perk as well. But as well as that, we do monthly giveaways. Uh, just, I suppose... As an example, I'll, I'll use January there. We gave uh, a share, a year share in a horse from the owner's group away to one of the members. Uh, last month then we, we had a, a, a package from Hacked Up, uh, Racing Gifts. And there this month we're giving away 200 quid um, for a children tipping competition. So realistically... If you're not in it, you're, you can't win it, folks. It's a tenner entry. It's 200 quid of a pot. I don't think you're going to find too much value about anywhere else. Um, It's split among first, second and third. So if you can get a few winners and if you can, you can, I suppose, keep up the form, you're in line for some sort of profit anyway, just without even backing a horse at all. So um, that's exactly what we're aiming for. We always give back uh, to the people that give to us. Uh, so look at I leave a link in the description below if you want to join up. Uh, it it's definitely helping us out big big time, and uh, I suppose helping the the inside inside world of the industry as well to I suppose get out and show show what they're worth and everything else like that. But uh, look at I'm going to leave it there. It's twenty three minutes on the on the on the video now so look at sorry for taking up so much of your time i want to wish you all the very best of luck tomorrow hopefully the hopefully the farm is going to turn around again and uh yeah hopefully we'll we'll get plenty of winners again i'll be back again tomorrow thanks very much and please make sure to keep liking sharing and subscribing